Well guys, things are getting serious in the shop and uh, yeah, that's gonna be a little over my head though. So good news, we got help. All right, guys, as I have teased in a few of the last videos, we're gonna put some sort of laser control. That's what we're gonna call it. Or we're gonna, no, let me rephrase that. We're gonna put some sort of grade control on this. And I know the basics, I know the ins and outs on, on this, but I am nowhere close to being an expert. Long story short, I had to call in some backup. This is uh, way over my head. And we were nice enough to have a guy, Mr. M Rainier. I didn't get that hurt. I'm horrible with names. Come all the way up from Texas. He owns a prototyping company called Flaming Dirt. Now, how cool is that? Yeah. Dirt Perfect, Flaming Dirt, this is gonna work out pretty good. So the ultimate goal with his help is we're going to try to reuse some of the old GPS controls on this dozer. I don't know, would it be considered faking them or just repurposing? No, I'd say we call it hacking them. <laughs> <laughs> I like hacking. So this is not gonna be your basic, simple, laser control system this is going to be a pretty advanced version of it if we can get it to work which i got full full uh confidence we will be able to get it to work but we got to go step by step by step by step so give me a second we'll explain a little bit more than what goes on back there but the first thing we want to do let me go around the other side i think i can show you guys better over here on the other side this dozer was ordered for the government with gps controls on the gps controls controlled two axes they controlled the blade up and down and they controlled the blade tilt left and right, and that is done through this solenoid valve. I guess we're gonna call it a solenoid valve, which is this valve right here. Uh, so what we're wanting to do is take one section of that valve, repurpose it to actually control ripper height up and down, and then we're gonna build a system to uh, control that. So first things first, we've actually kind of uh, already cut into the harness here a little bit. And we're going to do a test run. So this thing's got two things. It's got a main pilot solenoid down here. So without this thing activated, this valve is useless. So we got to put 24 volt to it. And then we got the other wire tied in to this solenoid right here. And this solenoid here should actuate the little pilot control valve in there, which controls the main valve back there. So in theory, if we thought this through correctly, whenever we jump that over to 24 volt with the dozer running the blade should tilt and if that works then we kind of know what we need to know as far as uh, beginning the repurposing project did i explain that correctly yeah that's 100 all right are we uh ready to cross our fingers and see what happens <laughs> yeah i think as long as we start high enough on the blade and don't crash your floor we're good <laughs> this this is our stuff could get interesting right off the bat so well, let's get into here and see what uh, see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna raise the blade up off the ground a little bit, so that way if we uh, do anything crazy, should be good. So, all right, you ready? When he touches those wires here down there, the blade moves. Oh, we can do it pretty fine. That's gonna work. That's gonna work. That's gonna work. <laughs> That's like the first hurdle jump right there. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. All right, let me lay this back down. And we'll get a plan on, uh, we'll plan on what we need to do next. This is gonna be so cool if we get it to work. Okay, now that we know that this valve will basically do what we need it to do, which is yeah. good news, we need to, oh boy, I'm gonna get gray hairs trying to explain this one. <laughs> <laughs> so this valve right here, if you follow it, it's controlling this spool right here. Somehow I need to swap this around to where it controls this spool. Top side is relatively easy. Bottom side is down there in spaghetti hydraulic hose 
junction and uh, you guys seen me video this hose enough i'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of that because i can't even see where i'm supposed to be working at down there so let me see if i can get some stuff swapped around if that don't work we do have a backup plan for a selector valve but i'm really hoping i can get those pilot hoses switched around and uh do what we need to do all right even though this does not look one bit different this was uh my oh my goodness it was miserable it was miserable. If I videoed that, I'm sure there'd be a lot of cussing involved. <laughs> so, <laughs> One big blur. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we got all the gray control stuff moved from this valve over to this valve. I know it looks pretty simple on the top, but way down there on the bottom, it was not that simple. And there is a bottomless pit down there that loves to eat tools and random stuff you really need bad. So up here on this end, we went ahead and just pretty much eliminated this side of the valve. We're not going to use it currently got our hoses plumbed back into this side we're going to try these two solenoids mr flaming dirt over here has got us a switch box hooked up and basically what we're trying to do with this is just make sure all this is going to work the way we want to so this one here will put power to the bottom of that and then this here should control the ripper up and down hopefully if that works then we can move on to the other stuff we got to make sure our thought process is correct and prove ourselves out as we go and not get too far ahead of ourselves so i'm trying to talk to uh prolong the inevitable of possible failure <laughs> so we'll see uh oh. all right we're gonna lower the cab back down so i get in there to start it we're gonna fire this thing up and uh keep our fingers crossed here we go All right, first thing I'm gonna do, is we're gonna fire this thing up and just make sure all the controls still work manually in here the way they're supposed to. So we'll uh, gauge that. I'm gonna take play controls. That's all still good. The ripper. Up is still up. Down is still down. Boot still moves. I guess it's time to see if we can do it from down below. Well, you ready? Alright, here we go. Power. <laughs> Look at that. Somebody must have got all the hoses right. Let me video it from back here if you guys can see. Obviously I'm not in the cab, so if he flips those switches up there. Perfect. Now we just have to make it do it automatically. Yeah. Hey, that's one big step down though. <laughs> we're getting there we are getting there all right so the next little test we want to run here is we're actually going to measure i'm going to go up here and bump that little uh, switch and we're going to measure how much this actually jumps that way we'll kind of have some measurements and some stuff to go off of when we go to program the controller later of how fast we need that uh solenoid to cycle basically so let me see if i can figure out here you ready Right, here we go. That's uh, 16. That's just a quick little switch. So basically, how the, the computer or the control system is going to basically turn that on and off. Long story short, so we're trying to figure out what the uh, timing is to need to be on and off versus how far it actually travels. So. We should be able to get pretty fine, shouldn't we? Yeah, that was one millimeter. That's nothing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can get up and limit that system how fast you as a human can react. Right. We can still switch even faster. Right, right. Uh, we can always speed it up. The, the question was whether we can slow it down enough, right? Yeah. Can we, can we get it small enough to, to make a small yeah. adjustment? I think all signs are pointing to yes. Yeah, that is great. 
All right, as you guys seen before, we got to basically the electric over hydraulic system working, which is a big step. So the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to control that. And we're gonna do that with the laser. This is gonna be laser, not GPS. So this is what I think is gonna set this thing apart from everything else. Check this out. This is actually an electric slide operated by a stepper motor. So our receiver will be on that, which will allow this thing to kind of track that laser going up and down, which is gonna be pretty cool. That way we just don't have that little small eight inch window to receive that uh, laser. But the first thing we need to do before we can get any of that stuff working is we actually need to get this thing mounted on the boot. Now, we could mount it out there, but this thing's going to stick up a little bit higher than the boot. I don't want to take a chance of the tile uh, going into the boot getting into any of this. Some of this stuff is it's not delicate, but we don't want tile smacking it around. So the other option is we got this thing on here. We could add another one back here and come out, but there's not a whole lot of room to get in here to work because that actually goes all the way down to right here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to come out of here 45 back to somewhere in this neighborhood and then come over because whenever this thing goes down, we need it to miss right there. So we need to do some, uh, do a little bit of fab work here and get this bracket made, get this thing mounted and uh, <laughs> get her hooked up. So here's the thought process guys. I got a line right there. That line actually mimics that down here. We try to keep this tucked in as tight as we can so it don't interfere with the uh, tile going up and over. Let's take this over to the uh, bench. Do a little fab work on her. See if we can make her fit. Check that out, that piece fits absolutely beautifully. I think that's gonna work pretty good. What do you think, sir? I know it's no uh, man behind the scenes welding job yet, but. But everything has small beginnings. <laughs> It'll do in a pinch is what he's trying to say. So the next step we're gonna go from here is I got this piece of uh, three quarter plate still I got left over. This, if you guys can imagine, I gotta figure out where. It's going to get bolted to there. We'll drill a couple holes in that. That piece will then have this piece bolted to it. I think what we're going to do is maybe make like two or three different sets of holes. That way we got multiple different mounting locations for where we're going. And eventually that piece will be mounted on the back side of this slide right here. We're going to have like, a, what I'm trying to do is make this thing where we can easily take it on and off quickly if we decide we need it or don't need it. There's gonna be some jobs, we may just run off drag chains, we don't actually need this. And there'll be some jobs where that's gonna be a mandatory must have. So we're just trying to make it to where we can kind of go either way, uh, really easy. So before I completely weld that off, let's pop a few holes in this, pop a few holes in that and uh, get that tacked off and uh, get a plan where this all needs to go. Check out this beauty, this turned out pretty sweet. So this is our block that'll weld up there on the plow. I got these holes drilled. We'll have, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, 
four different mounting positions however we need so let's get this tacked on up there and then we'll have to make a cradle to hold our slide Check that out guys, that's gonna work absolutely awesome. That slide will fit right onto this. We still gotta make some brackets for the top and bottom. We've got multiple different mounting holes for different positions. Now, a couple small drawbacks to this is it is kind of tucked around the corner there a little bit because I want it behind the pipe feet. I don't want the pipe feet interfering with it. Uh, I don't want the pipe catching on that and tearing anything up on those rails, which means that our laser may have to be mounted off to the side a little bit to get a good reading on it. The other thing is we can actually raise that up and get the laser up above it where we can read it all the way around. Uh, one reason why we put the holes in there, well, we're just going to kind of play that by here. I don't want to get that laser so high uh, to where it makes it uh, difficult to mount it securely up that high somewhere out in the field. So we have options to do whatever we need to do. So the next thing we need to do is get that slide rail mounted on there. I need to make some brackets to basically let this thing sit on there. Got some little T-bolts to go in there and uh, go from there. But that's gonna have to wait for tomorrow, guys. Mr. Flame and Dirt, he actually took off to uh, get some sleep. He drove all day. It's like the mad scientist up in here. I am, uh, I am intrigued because this is a complete foreign language, language to me. So I'm really, uh, interested to uh, learn some of this and see how it all goes together can't thank him enough for uh coming up and doing this i'm sure some of you guys are wondering why don't you just put gps on this thing and gps would be nice and would be awesome guys but gps is expensive uh i priced two different gps systems to put on this thing and both of them were around 30 thousand dollars to do what i want to do keep in mind guys i got 7800 dollars in the tile plow i am not officially in the tiling business i just do some tile from time to time. And most of our tile is, uh, we'll use drag chains. We won't even use this automatic laser setup. But we do have a couple jobs coming up where we need some sort of grade control, and this will work perfect. And not only that, it is cool. We get to build this thing from scratch with Flame and Dirt's help, and uh, we get to learn along the way. I am a, I'm a, I, I, I probably shouldn't be touching, but I'm touching. Sorry, I'm touching. Okay, I gotta quit touching. Anyways. Stay tuned for tomorrow. We're gonna to finish building the bracket. We're gonna get this thing mounted on there and then we're gonna to try to make all that stuff he's got over there talk to each other. And eventually that's gonna to need to talk to the dozer. It's gonna be awesome. I'm heading to bed. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, new afternoon in the shop, which means new projects. I've actually been piddling on making some bracketry to uh, get this thing mounted to the bar we made yesterday, but I've uh, I've been learning. I've been going to uh, school over here with uh, I guess I can call you Professor Dirt at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of scary. So, we'll be. I don't even know if I'm even smart enough to explain this, but I'm gonna try. So we got the laser set up on this fancy tripod that also doubles as a drill press from time to time. But the reason for that is we're able to make very minute adjustments on the elevation of this thing. The reason why that's important is we're trying to read this LCD's display right here. I don't know, I got, it's got the camera in the way of the shot, but basically what we're wanting to do is figure out on the back side of these things, which pins correlate with the bars in that triangle, which will help us basically tell this whole system grade in the end, correct? Yeah. So we need that thing to communicate with everything else to let it know where it's at, because everything's gonna be based off where that laser line's at. So what, Let's see if we can explain this without getting too crazy here. So basically, whenever all the bars on, there's nine bars and all bars are on 
This is the, is it? Is it the, the, basically the reading. The begin. reading out. So basically, we're getting the reading off the computer screen right there. As you guys notice, it's a little bit uh, different because we're on a different bar. So basically that reading will eventually tell us which pin connector on the back side of this thing we need to let everything in the system know where it's at. So this is kind of like a little bit of a crack in the code type deal oh, here. Oh, absolutely. Right? So then we go down to eight on, which is eight little lines on on the right there. And there's one number, there's one number that's different. And that one number is the pin number that that wire controls that particular one. So then we go on down the row to seven on. There's another, another one that's different right there. So that is now that pin number on, I'm gonna call it the wiring harness. I'm a yeah. mechanic, so that'd be a wiring yeah. harness. I'm sure there's some fancy technical <laughs> IT term for that. Yeah. So basically what we're gonna do now is we need to figure out what six on would be. So I'm gonna crank this thing up ever so slightly. You guys holler real loud if you see a line go out. Come on. Don't let me down now. Oh, right there. You there. Go. At, at six. Okay, so now it's six on. So now we'll go over here and read. I got to kind of straddle here. You guys see the Just computer Just don't block it while you're Yeah, reading. I can see the computer screen. So the top row would be uh, three ones. Mm -hmm. Zero one, zero one. Okay. Second line would be three ones, zero, two ones. Mm -hmm. Then three ones. Got him. Got him? Yeah. There he is, that third one. Right there. So that is, you guys, just, the best way I can visualize that is just kind of imagine that as being the pin connector on the back. And each one of those little boxes represents the pin connector. And that is the pin we need to represent. Basically seven. S yeah. Because seven died on its way to six. Correct. So yeah, we're just gonna keep on doing that until we have all of it. Yeah. So this is a fun little game. <laughs> it's like a real life game of Clue or something. Yeah, so now exactly like that. We'll crank that up just a little bit higher and we'll go to five on right there. It there just changed. Oh, it's going back and bouncing little, back and forth. Bit, it's a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Okay. I think that's a solid five. All right. So now we got uh, three ones. Mm -hmm. Zero one, zero one. Okay. That's same. I think this is where it's going to be at, right here. Hold on, I blocked the thing. Looks like we got, uh, hold on, I'll wait for it to settle out. Three ones, mm -hmm. zero, one, one. Not yet. And then we got uh, three ones, mm -hmm. zero, four ones. Not yet. Then we got three ones. There he is. <laughs> that third one. <laughs> and zero and three ones. Yeah. That's him. There's a difference. All right. So, so far it's been all on the same wire on the four different back planes. Right. So this one, two, three, four. Gotcha. So this is basically a, a ground circuit, right? Coming down that column, correct? Yeah. So it's all the same wire on the same ground. So I think when we go to the next one, we're going to jump over a column. To jump. We can't, we, we out of what that wire. Now the real question is now that we got this information, what do we do with it? I don't have a clue. That's his job. <laughs> But you guys get the process. We're going to keep going down through there, figuring out which pin connector is what. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump over at some point and start getting that fabbed up. I'll take you guys along for that. And hopefully, we'll get this thing mounted up on the dozer and get somewhere.
All right, I'm gonna be extremely careful here because I don't want to drop this, but this is the rail that we got that's gonna go on the plow. We drilled all the holes in yesterday to bolt. This is the piece you just seen me make. <clears throat> it's got slots in it because on the bottom side of here, there's some bolts. So that'll slide down the top like a little bitty hat. And on the bottom side down here, I got this bracket made. It'll slide up underneath there and then we can tighten down these little clamps and hold this in. The whole thought process behind this is just trying to make it to where we can remove it, get it in and out of there pretty quick on an as needed basis. So let me uh, hope this whole thing fits and then we'll kind of tack it together or make sure we can get it in and out of there. And if that works, we'll take it over and put it on the plow. All right, guys, got it just roughly tacked together. I guess the question is now, will it come out of there as planned? It's a little bit tight getting in out there guys but i think it's gonna work after we get it on the machine we may tweak these uh c clamps just a little bit or possibly replace them with some bigger ones but all in all i think we got a winner i'm gonna finish welding this off we're gonna throw it up on the machine and see what it looks like
Well, guys, there it is. It is on there. It is mounted up, man. I think it's looking good. It's looking awesome. Right, it's getting made. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's pretty doggone cool. So you guys may have seen me struggle to get this in there a little bit. Now we got this carriage on here and see how far it goes. I think we're gonna take these rails. If we slide these rails up about an inch and a half or two inches, it's gonna make all the difference in the world as far as getting that thing in and out of there. So I think that is definitely going to work. Don't worry, I'm sure you guys get all kinds of questions about this and I'm gonna try to explain it as we go forward. We gotta get everything mounted first and then we can start getting it all hooked up. So speaking of getting stuff mounted, the next thing we need to do is this thing needs a limit switch on it so it knows when it's all the way at the top and it knows when it's all the way at the bottom so it don't keep trying to, uh, let's just call it self-destruct. So over here on the bench, I found me a plate of steel and got a limit switch. We're gonna poke a couple holes down in here, mount this switch on there, and then I'll take you guys over there and kind of show you what I got in mind as far as how we're gonna mount to that carriage. So let me get some holes drilled and we'll head back over. Check that out. Our switch actually bolted to our plate just as planned. So we got a couple of these little L brackets on here. Got a couple holes drilled there as well. So hopefully, oh, I'm gonna need both hands. Hold on. Hopefully what should happen, so we should be able to bolt. Oh man, drop my screw. Should be able to bolt this right on there like so. Where'd my screw go? I'm back, found my screw. Took off underneath the dozer of all places. All right, we're gonna put this on here. Come on. Leave that kind of loose for now. And let me show you what the plan is. We're gonna take some of these little brackets right here. They will slide in this T-rail. And that is what our switch will go on. We'll have one for up and one for down. I don't see no reason why that won't work at all, do you? Oh, that's perfect. I like it. I just have one question. Yes, sir. Why is your stroke so short? <laughs> well, because I'm not tall enough. So eventually, this here will get moved all the way to the top of the stroke, which it'll just slide up this rail. I believe this one here is already set pretty close to the bottom. It may need a little bit of fine tune adjustment, but that is another little thing knocked out right there. That is looking good. Uh, it's perfect. All right, guys, unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to wrap up this particular video. But man, we made some huge, huge uh, strides forward in this particular project, and it is it's awesome. I'm so excited about it. The first big win we had was actually being able to repurpose the solenoid valve to a different spool to control the ripper. So that was pretty cool to be able to reuse some of the old stuff and make that work. Second thing we got accomplished was actually getting the uh, travel slide rail in place i think this is going to be the ticket and really going to set this thing apart from any other system out there has been able to keep that laser uh basically be able to track that laser over a three foot span hopefully you guys understand that we'll explain it more as we go but uh that is going to be pretty doggone cool if we can get it to work i keep saying we it's mostly regier from flaming dirt without him this project would not be possible at all i can't thank him enough for actually taking this on he actually owns a powder coating company and a prototype company in florida uh, it's called Flaming Dirt. I'll try to link the website down below. He's got some really cool stuff on there and um, cannot thank him enough. I know uh, some of you guys are probably wondering why we're going through all this trouble to build this. Obviously, there's systems out there that you can buy. We could put on this plow to do pretty much the same thing or do a similar thing. But two reasons. One's cost. With his help, we're able to keep the cost down tremendously maybe like let's just say a fraction at this point i don't know the total cost but it's going to be a fraction of what actually buying the system is and i think when we're done this is going to be better than most laser systems that i could even buy uh it's not quite going to be what gps is but it's still going to do what we do very well the other thing is i know very little about it like i know how it works and how to use it from an operator standpoint but as far as the 
workings behind the scene of what actually makes it happen, I have no idea. So it's been kind of cool for me to kind of see all the programming and all the thought process that goes into actually making this thing work. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Comment down below, let me know. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you wanna make sure you don't miss out on the rest of this project, I would consider subscribing. Either way guys, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one, later. All right, real quick guys, I was editing this video. I got a little bit of news. If you guys head over to the Flaming Dirt website, they got all kinds of cool stuff on there. They do a lot of powder coating, a lot of prototyping, a lot of computer programming. And if you guys, if you guys dream up any crazy ideas like me, these guys may just be the people that can help it come to life. But anyways, if you go on here, hit the shop now button, you see they've got all kinds of uh, Jeep accessories, all kinds of just random stuff, hitch jewelry, uh bracketry here uh, i think we're going to get some of these tumblers here with dirt perfect on to put them on our website but if you guys are over here and you see something you like we have a promo code dirt perfect five all caps use promo code dirt perfect five all caps if you guys tool through the website and don't see anything you like just uh leave a note somewhere and tell them thanks because as you guys will see in some upcoming videos we could not have done this without them so head to flaming dirt if you guys see something you like dirt perfect five Later.